So we're using uh, deep learning and convolutional neural networks to automate the process of biomedical image annotation. We're working with uh, about five gigabytes worth of uh, zebrafish data, but that's the kind of thing that scales up when you move from zebrafish, which are about five millimeters in size, to a mouse brain, which is going to be about uh, 1.4 exabytes in size. Uh, some of the computational challenges uh, just kind of are at the root of deep learning. Uh, for example, choosing hyperparameters. There's the whole issue of having to like look for uh, a net that fits your uh, project well, and then having to like move the net around and move layers around. Our frameworks, we've been looking at CAFE and we've been looking at TensorFlow. Uh, both of them are really flexible and allow us to move nets around the way that we want. I guess I'll shout out the P100 GPUs because uh, we've used them in the K80s and it's just been a massive difference in the amount of time that's being spent actually running these nets. With the K80s, it was about seven minutes to run MNIST, which is a classic deep learning um, example, but it was about seven seconds <laughs> with the P100s. This is huge, huge data. So like a mouse brain, which is incredibly small, um, can amount to 1.4 exabytes worth of data, but that's just from one camera angle. Um, the uh, people at the Allen Brain Institute who are providing us with this data, um, they're moving to 64 cameras, which is going to end up being 100 terabytes of data a day that they're going to send us, which is like an insane amount of data, and you can't can't expect undergraduates and graduate students to sit and be able to manually annotate that kind of thing when their skills and their assets could be a lot better um, used in discovering how the brain is connected instead of just clicking through thousands and thousands of images. So we're hoping to free up some of their time and get them doing things that they really want to do.